Well, hi, and welcome to my shop here. It's July 26th. Oh my gosh, July's almost over, and it's a fantastic day outside, so I'm going to be fairly quick here this morning. I hope to be fairly quick this morning. So I want to continue with the alignment process and focus on the broadcast band as the first band to align. And it's a little different than the shortwave bands anyway, so we'll do the broadcast band next. Now yesterday I aligned these two cans up here, which you can't quite see. The two transformers that are inside the, these cans. Today I'm going to work on some other circuits, but I think I'm going to need to explain a little bit about a radio before I go any further. So first I apologize for this explanation. <laughs> That's, that's the way it's going to be. Here we are. Here's our radio. Here it is again. There's the radio. Here it is again in three parts. Here I'm labeling them. R, F, I, F, A, F. Radio frequency part. This part of the radio operates at the same frequency as what you're trying to tune in. Intermediate frequency stage, this is what I tuned up yesterday. It has two, uh, two transformers that I've tuned up. This runs at only one frequency all the time. This is a fixed tuned part of the radio. And the frequency in this radio is 460 kilohertz. And that's what I was working with yesterday. Then over here we have the audio frequencies. This is the stuff you can hear, obviously, uh, coming out of the speaker. Each of these lines, a conversion or a big change takes place. At each of these parts, where you're moving from this part of the radio to this part, has a special tube. They're not the same by any means. They're completely different tubes, but they're very special. This tube is called the, well, it's got different names. Mixer tube. I think in Britain they tend to call it the frequency changer, which is actually a much better term. And this one is called the detector tube. It's kind of an old word for this. Detector. And I think way, way back when people were very first experimenting with radio waves, they had no idea what was going on. They knew something was going on. They needed some way to detect it. And so they started creating detectors. Eventually, detectors became radios, and the detector became a circuit inside the radio. So, so that's basically what's going on. Now, there's more tubes in the radio. These are all amplifier. Amplifier, 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 amplifier. Okay, there's an inverter tube, but we won't worry about that. So it's basically what a radio is. Amplification of the antenna signal. In this radio, it's done that way. In some radios, they don't have an amplifier in this area. A mixer, which takes a signal created by another circuit, I'm going to draw it down here, called the oscillator. Literally, an oscillator making a, a tone in the radio. It goes into the mixer. What's coming out of the RF goes into the mixer too. What comes out then to go through here is at that frequency. Or let me put it this way. Anything that comes out of this tube that's at that frequency through the radio because this part of the radio is tuned to 460 kilohertz. And the mixer tube works by mixing, I mentioned this much earlier, the signal from the oscillator and the signal from the antenna. The signal from the oscillator is controlled by the tuning knob. When you turn the tuning knob, you're changing the pitch of the oscillator, and you're changing the frequency that's going into the mixer to mix with everything that's coming from the antenna. So, not to get too far into this, you can always you know Google this stuff and read a lot more about it and see a lot better diagrams. So what we're doing is we're aligning the circuits now in here. As you can appreciate, when you finish building something like this in a factory, it's not each unit isn't identical. There's all kinds of small variations, variations in the components variations in the positions of the wires. Everything is just a little bit different. So to raise the radio up to peak performance, there are little adjustments that are made all over the place in a radio 
to uh, tune it up so everything is working properly. When you, by the way, when you turn the tuning knob, you're not only tuning and changing the frequency of this oscillator, it's hooked up to some stuff that's changing in here, back in, in this area. So the alignment process, I'm following a fairly standard alignment process. First, you get this part of the radio working properly at 460, which is what we did yesterday. Then you get this part of the radio working properly, and this part. You usually do both these together at the same time. So you're literally making adjustments, fine adjustments in the oscillator frequency. So, so when the knob is turned to a certain position and the pointer on the scale is pointing at a certain number here, that it all works out. So that's part of what I'll be doing is making sure the oscillator, oscillators, there's a different oscillator frequency for every band, that, that these are correct. And I'll also be adjusting, uh, I guess I'll put them here, the uh, few adjustments in the front of the radio from the antenna. Here's the antenna. Okay, there's my antenna coming in. And then there's some adjustments to be made in here. RF, IF, AF. There's no real adjustments in the audio frequency area other than the tone control, which, which of course you work from the front of the radio. So there's, there's no radio frequencies here at all. There shouldn't be anyway. So that's how a radio works. Three basic sections. Okay. What do those adjustments look like? So you've seen the adjustments uh, for, uh, well, you've seen the cans. You can't, can't really see the adjustments, but can you see these coils here? So each of these coils has a slug inside, and that slug can be moved up and down by turning. I'm just going to move the camera here. These adjustments here hard to see in the darkness. This, this one, there's another one here. Same thing, just a threaded threaded uh, rod. This one's really high. That's probably not right. This one looks like it's right at the limit. That doesn't seem right. Those particular adjustments are probably adjusting the oscillator frequency for each band. So the, uh, so the radio will operate right. You can appreciate there's a couple different things being tuned. This is being tuned, tuned or adjusted. And there's tuned circuits in here. And everything has to line up for the signal to make it all the way through. And that's what the alignment process, that's why this process has the name alignment. Because you're trying to get everything, everything lined up. Okay. Um, you can even see some adjustments here, by the way. There's a capacitor. There's a hole you can get a screwdriver down into it. Same sort of thing over here with this one here. Uh, looks like all these adjustments can be done from the top now, the top of the radio. We don't have to have it standing up like this. But what I need to do is I need to put the bottom plate on because you can see these coils are just sitting out here. And you put a big sheet of metal here, they're going to have some influence on these coils. All, all these are going to have some amount of influence. Since that's the way the radio is going to be, when it's back in its cabinet, the metal base on it, and I gotta put it on now. Okay, I'll take care of that and then we'll uh, we'll we'll start the actual alignment process after some coffee. Okay, next thing to take a look at is the alignment instructions, and this is all we've got here. Now I've done step one and step two. On the intermediate frequency circuits, that's the middle part of the radio, literally is the middle of the radio. And now we're going to work on this front end area here. You can see all these adjustments that are here, all kinds of them. Look at them all, all around the place. So we've done one and two, we should be looking for number three. I happen to know it's right here. Broadcast band oscillator core. The core is referring to the slug that's inside the coil that's going to move. Slug number is L19. Not to let your eye do this. That would be a mistake. Where is L? Silence descends upon me. Now, you know, I have found errors on one of these diagrams for a radio very much like this. Uh, 
is this the radio? Is this the radio? Um, what, what's the story here? L19 <laughs> at 600, and then they show L20. Is there an L19 floating around here? Why, why would... Um, look at this, I'm already off track. I, I can't even make it this far. Well, okay, that's three. Let's look at four. Broadcast oscillator trimmer. I thought we just did that. Broadcast oscillator core. Core? Trimmer? When they use the word trimmer, they're usually referring to a capacitor. If you notice, this one is done at 600 kilohertz. That's one, that's the low end of the AM band. And this one's done at the high end, 1500 kilo, kilohertz. And that's the story. You're adjusting both ends of the uh, band here with this. When you adjust the oscillator, you, 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 to some degree, you're, you're changing the position of the pointer on the front of the uh, front of the radio. So you got to get it right at both ends, at 600 and 1500. Hopefully, it's right all the way through then as you tune through. Okay, that's number four, but look, there's more fours. What a crazy way of doing this. So here, now we're dealing with the RF trimmer. RF is referring to that first first stage in the radio. This is done at 1500, it's done at a high frequency because it's a capacitor involved. And then we have another one, antenna trimmer. And this one is to uh, adjust circuits um, that affect the, the antenna, that's the best way I can put it. It's a very, very front of the radio. Wouldn't you start here? Well, they want you to start with the oscillator. Get the oscillator done correctly. And then move on to these other adjustments. And then we're done with the broadcast band. So, uh, what's this L19, L20 thing going on here? I'm, 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 I'm not getting something quite right. L15, L16, L19. And oh, L17 and 18. Okay, something I don't understand. <laughs> I'm looking in the radio to see if there's something peculiar like I don't, I don't see anything peculiar. Did I not drink enough coffee uh, before I started this? Let's look at the schem schematic. L18 and 17, what is going on with those L19 and 20? Why is it like that? Okay, I, think I can just jump to the schematic here. There's nothing to show here. <laughs> yeah, okay, just bear with me here a second. Let me just kind of back my way out of here. There's something to show. This piece of software, after a few minutes, just dumps the image and then claims there's nothing to show here. <laughs> okay, so what's going on with this L17 thing? So see, see, let's zoom in. See all the slugs here? The, these are adjustable slugs in these coils. These are the oscillator coils. It even says on it, oscillator. L15. L16, L17, L18. So I got it. So this is one coil, but it has a tap in it. See this wire coming out the middle? And they want to, I guess, at different places, they want to talk about this part of the coil versus this part of the coil. And they've numbered them differently. L17 and L18, but they're the same slug going inside one slug. Same thing going on down here, it's a tapped coil and they've numbered it L19 up here and L20 down there. So that, that's what's going on. Good. One coil with two names. <laughs> they throwing everything they've got at me here. So if we look at the broadcast situation, we have an adjustment here. See, antenna coil, that's that last adjustment I was pointing to. And this is coming right, right off the antenna here. Okay, so, and then we have broadcast RF coil, just past this tube. Here it is, separately tuned. See, these ones, there's no tuning. There's no, there's no slug 
to move around. These are fixed. Can't do anything about them, but this is adjustable. And then over here in the oscillator area, we have the broadcast oscillator down here. So I'm going to do this, this, this. I thought there were four. This and this. There's something else? I thought there were four. Maybe I'm missing something here on the scanning around. Okay, that'll do it. Okay, let's take a look at these uh, adjustments and I'm going to keep on my screen that uh, diagram so I can look over and see it. So here's the different oscillator adjustments. This is a five band radio. Should be five oscillator adjustments. There are only four appearing here. I think it's this one what, what I'm doing now is I'm preparing myself to not make a mistake. When you do these alignments, it's so easy to, yeah, for me, for me anyway, to halfway through turn the wrong thing. So turn the wrong thing a little bit and you've undone whatever you've done before and you got to start all over and blah, blah, blah. So I don't want to make mistakes doing this. Although I have accepted that when you do an alignment, the first time through is kind of a practice session. The second time through is really when you get it all nailed down. So this is one of them here. This is the 1920 oscillator cord 600. This one's adjusted. And a broadcast oscillator trimmer at 1500 is, let me sure I get it right now, it's this one. That's a capacitor. That's one of the capacitor we looked at underneath and that's the coil. This piece of metal here is kind of like a spring lock if you like. You can, you can, you can kind of remove this. And these will turn easier. Sounds kind of crunchy. Now there's some more adjustments. It, it, a very common thing in uh, radios is for there to be a trimmer capacitor mounted right on the big tuning capacitor. It's right here. And you can see the screw that needs to be adjusted. There's one, two, three of them here. And during, during this effort, we do RF trimmer, RF trimmer and antenna trimmer. We do the antenna trimmer here, and we do an RF trimmer. The RF trimmer is, you could look at it this way, the antenna trimmer is ahead of this tube, and the uh, uh, RF trimmer is after this tube. There are tuned circuits ahead. There's antenna tuned circuits ahead. This is the first RF tube here. This guy's just boosting the antenna signal, really. That's really what this guy's doing. So, remember I said all tubes are amplifiers except for a couple of key ones, m m m more or less. <laughs> so it's an amplifier here. This is the mixer tube. It's mixing the oscillator signals in with the antenna signal. And then if there's anything coming out of this tube at 460 kilohertz, right out the speaker. That's kind of the idea. So once again, this guy, this guy, and these two guys. Okay, I'm ready. I am ready. So we're going to turn on the radio. We're going to let it warm up. And uh, me, I get to, I'm going to go outside a little bit because it's just a beautiful, beautiful day. And here I am in my somewhat dingy shop here. Yeah, we'll turn this on and let it warm up. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Now I've got the signal generator running at 600 kilohertz. I've got the meter you can see on the screen, uh, the, this meter here, that's set for 15 volts negative, so a negative voltage will go up, and that's going to be the AVC voltage. Just reading completely zero right now because I don't think I put the ground on. Is the ground on? Just one sec here while I overlook something. I forgot to clip the ground on the meter. Okay, I think there'd be a little bit there. Well, let's carry on. Okay, so. There we go. Oh, there's the tone from the signal generator. Turn it down a little bit. Back 
Back up. Back up. You're crowding me. Okay. There comes that. What the heck is that? It's not this radio. <laughs> Going into high gear now. Let's tune now and see how accurate that is, because that's accurate at 600. Where is it on the dial? Wow. That's like right on the money. Pretty hard to improve on that. Okay, so we'll go up to the other end. We'll check there. 1500. but it's dead on so that's fantastic so the oscillator in this radio on the broadcast band is doing exactly the right thing wow I don't think that's ever happened especially especially when I work so much on a radio okay um, so much for doing those adjustments now the next two adjustments are the uh, just one sec here just to be absolutely sure I don't rely on my memory are the broadcast antenna trimmer and the broadcast RF trimmer both done at 1500 so that's where we are 1500 and I'll get myself a screwdriver I don't know if I can get these on camera easily okay screwdriver screwdriver great big screwdriver shouldn't influence anything. It's a small influence there. Okay, big screwdriver, very helpful in these cases. So I'm watching the meter. Oh, you can see the meter, it's on the screen. Oh, look at it, let's watch the meter. What happens when I... Makes a little difference. Do have, let me get this loose and then I can switch to a plastic screwdriver. Here we go. That's right on the money. Okay, and then it was this one. A little wee bit out. That is it. That is the entire alignment process completed for the broadcast band. We got to find out what we can pick up now. Did anything change? Um, so, I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to arrange the outdoor antenna and uh, we'll get this guy another, another go. There's something a little weird going on here. Uh, <laughs> very weird. So the ABC meter was much higher just a moment ago. And literally when I clicked start on this video, it dropped to half what it was. It, like what? I made a click on my computer and it does something over here. And also there was a big pop came out of this radio and it, the ABC voltage went up while I was attaching the antenna. There it goes. So something's going on here. And Lordy B, if I haven't found Lordy B, 
if I hadn't found two more paper capacitors hidden there up down there. <laughs> oh, these guys. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about those right now. I'm sure they're not radio oriented capacitors. They might have something to do with the audio. So I'm going to fret over that. For now, I'm going to fret over why this radio pops. Okay, let me fiddle with the antenna. There's just what? Just bad connections? Bad ground. Let's try that. I don't really know what those pops are. When I hook up the antenna or disconnect, I get a kind of a very distinct pop. Okay, we're ready to go. We're on the outdoor antenna, and uh, good, yeah. The signal generator switched off, so we can't affect it. I expect to pick up, I'm on the long wire antenna. I actually don't expect the radio's performance to be much different than it was, because the alignment was very minimal, very, very minimal on here. So maybe, if we're lucky, we can get the French station at 860, and that would prove some kind of improvement. quiet down here. Not the best sign. No, no, no sign of it. I believe that's 590 Sports Channel from Toronto. Terrible reception on this antenna. So I'm going to run, I'm going to flip to a different antenna. I don't think it's going to help. I'll try. is working well. If it can pick up 610 from St. Catharines, I'm way up here at Lake Simcoe. That's right across Lake Ontario. 640. 6, 640 is beat by this interference here in my house. 680. 740. What is that weird interference? Holy smokes. Somebody's probably answered that on one of my videos and I'm not aware of that. Well, there we go. This is on a lousy antenna. A, a, I should say it not pretty really lousy, but a less uh, potent antenna than the loop antenna I tried earlier. If I put the loop antenna on here now, we're going to pick up lots of stuff, but I'm not going to bother doing that. I think that's enough for today. That's great. So, fantastic. Okay, now, what's left now are four shortwave bands. Three of them appear to be working kind of okay. One of them appears very low. That's this one. So I'm hoping the alignment on this band is going to bring it right up to the same kind of strength as the other shortwave bands. But, uh, assuming we get all the way through that, maybe tomorrow, uh, the radio may be finished. Maybe done. I don't like the word finished. <laughs> the radio may, I, I may be finished with the radio. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, I'm on my way to enjoy a, another fantastic day here. So lucky. See ya.